Okay, if you watched the last video, you should have found, uh, you, we, we found that we basically created this wave function that basically tells us the probability of finding something between two uh, positions. So let's actually try to do this. So let's, let's do an example. Um, I'm going to just draw a random uh, wave function. So this is x in this axis. This is the wave function as a function of x. And let's say we have something that looks like this. Okay, that's going to be our wave function. Okay, um, and what we're going to ask is we're going to just define a couple of places and we're going to say, all right, is the we're going to say this is are we more likely to find the um, the quanton in that place in the left side or the right side? Okay, and this is how we're going to answer that. Um, we're going to take the absolute value of this thing of that wave function squared so let's see if i can do that i'm going to try to square this by i all right so there's that part all right now i'm going to square the right part as well i shouldn't have made it so big it should it should be should be quite a bit bigger but i i don't want to run too much into the other stuff um and so this is this um is psi of x absolute value squared so that shows you the probability and so the probability of of being on the left side um, is just whatever the area under the curve of this is because remember an integration just adds up all the area under the curve so that the the probability of being in that side is just whatever the area of that curve is whenever we add that up um, the probability of being on the right side is this area all right and it is very easy to see that this that that the one on the right has a much bigger area under the curve than the left side. And so we're much more probable to be on the right side than we are to be in the left side. Okay, that's the general idea. Um, so, so hopefully you get that idea. This is the, the general idea of how we're gonna do these calculations. Um, I'm gonna do, let's do one that's a little more quantitative. Uh, again, I'm just making this up as I go along. Um, let's, make a weird wave function. So we're, I'm gonna do what Thomas Moore does, which we do these weird blocky ones, um, where the blocks are just there so that we can uh, see, so that we can basically count um, how high the thing is. Um, so actually, let me, let me make the blocks, uh, let me make the blocks in a different color. Um, so let's just say this is one, this is two, this is negative one, is negative two. All right, so one, two, zero, negative one, negative two. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's say we have a wave function that just looks like. Um, oh, and uh, let's let's make sure. We, it turns out we need this in both directions. So this is one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and actually, I'm going to extend this just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do this and this because we're going to probably end up needing that. Okay. It's kind of like watching an art program by a terrible artist. Okay. Um, all right. So let's say we have a function uh, that looks like um, uh, this. Okay, and we can ask, what is the probability? So let's let's call this as so that's one, two, three, four, five. This is x equals five. Um, this is x. Let's ask, um, what is the probability of uh, finding the quanton? at x greater than five. Okay. Now to do this, I've really screwed myself um, uh, because I haven't made this big enough. Um, uh, but that's right, we'll, we'll, we'll do this in a second. Um, so 
to do this again, we need to draw the absolute value square of this because this is just this is just the wave function. So what I've shown you is this is just psi of x. Let me just draw it here. Uh, here. Psi of x is just is just what I've drawn in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, the psi of x squared in green. All right. So let's see if I can do this. Um, this. Oh, no, nope. I've already screwed it up. Um, what's 1 squared? 1 squared is just 1. Uh, minus 2 squared. Screw it up again. Minus 2 squared is... Uh, this, sorry, that's minus 1. So minus 1 squared is 1. All right, so we get minus 1. Uh, negative 1 squared is just 1. There we go. Doing great so far. This is going to be 3 squared, uh, which unfortunately is 9, um, which is going to look like that. And this part, I shouldn't have done that continuously. Oh my goodness, I hate this. Uh, um, let's see. Can I just get rid of this? There we go. Um, so we'll do 9. Uh, and then this is 2 squared, which is 4. Um, so, uh, or negative 2 squared, which is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this should come here, uh, there like that, and then go over. All right, that's pretty darn good. That's as good as I'm going to do. And again, this is 9, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, eight, nine. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Good. So now if we add up the total number of squares that are greater than five, which will give us the total area, we should, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Nope. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So we get 31, which makes sense, right? Because that's 9. Uh, that's not correct. Oh, yeah, it's 9 times 3, um, which is 27 plus 4, which is 31. Okay, so we get that there are 31 boxes greater than uh, at... at at x greater than 5, right? All right. Um, but again, we need to divide by the total probability of finding it everywhere. Um, the total probability of finding it everywhere is just the integral of from minus infinity to infinity. Um, the only thing we have that we haven't included are these two guys here. And so there are 33 total boxes. So the probability of finding it at x greater than 5 is just equal to 31 over 33. Uh, the number of the area under the curve of psi squared um, greater than 5 divided by the total number of probability of finding it anywhere. All right. And so that's how you actually do that calculation of kind of figuring out what the probability of finding it in specific places are. Um, Pretty straightforward. Again, the main thing is just remember to turn this into um, the absolute value of psi squared. Um, and be careful with your squaring. As I showed, it can be difficult sometimes. Um, and that should do it. And uh, that should be the whole, the whole problem. All right.